Hello and welcome. I'll be giving you a code structure walkthrough on this Mandalorian scene. I will let you have a quick look at it quickly. So just make sure that's all stopped. Okay. Maybe if I actually just tick it. Or maybe not. Well, so with this Mandalorian scene, we were given a set scene to play around with. As you can see, um, we had the background using all these cards and everything, which I'll get into soon. So essentially we used our full read plate. And as you can see, this one has the tubs in it. It has some lights as well as our background with our foreground. Now with this, we were utilizing this with this as well as with this. So you can see that with this one, I cut into these to ensure that they pretty much reacted like windows. I utilized this floor, a left panel, a right panel, and those other two images that I'd shown you. So using the green screened Mando scene, as you can see, he goes to get himself ready and begins walking. Now you can see that there's all these trackers and everything and he's got some movement in there. So what we essentially did was edited all of this color correct information. So I can close all these ones for the moment. So you can just see all these values. And with color correct, you can see there's some subtle difference, but not too much. After the color correct, we then added our blur node. So our blur has been upped by only one with a 15 filter and a one mix. Going on from our blur node, we actually created this roto paint node first. So if I click on the roto paint, you can see that we've got this sort of box area around our Mando character. And this box area essentially traces Mando's movements, as you can see. So once we created that, we ended up creating a Chromo Kia. So with the Chromo Kia, we set the, the background value to the green screen, adjusted the screen gain, balance, chroma gain, white point, and black points. So by adjusting these, when you switch to your alpha channel, you can see that there's not much really around him, which is exactly what we need. So it's only going to utilize this cropped out area. So I'll turn the alpha channel off again and as you can see after the roto paint and everything, so we had our chrome OKR and then roto paint and it had boxed it in like this. After that, we had set a reformat node to adjust the size to this read node. And with that, we added in our transform. So the transform looks a bit funky by itself like this, but the transform pretty much allows it to adjust within this over channel. As you can see, it's stretched out and it is to size. So going forward with this, with our roto paint node, we clicked on it, press control C, clicked away, control V, and created a duplicate roto paint node here. But what we did to add in a bit more of the shadowing, we actually clicked this little box over here, which inverted the colors. We then added in our tracker, and as you can see, when I switch over to the tracker, we've got this black box with the green screen in all here. So I'll just get rid of all these other boxes so you don't see that weird box there. But essentially, we set up 15 trackers, and the trackers will track all of the key lighting and everything. 
So moving forward with the tracker, we have our transform match. We don't need to adjust any of this. So after that, we then move on to our camera tracker. Now with our camera tracker, you can see there's all these dots and everything. So what the camera tracker does is as this moves, you can see these little dots, they start to shift. So what that's doing is tracking the overall movement of the Mando character. So when you hook up the foreground afterwards, it can create this sort of image of sorts. So I'll just stop that now. So we have our tracker point cloud, which we can disable and enable. So if I enable it, and I go out to here, so this is our 3D screen. The camera is projecting out to this, so we can switch to the camera when we go onto the camera. And essentially what the camera tracker point cloud does is it tracks the point size to be able to cast the image in a 3D projection. So with the camera tracker, what we had to do was click track mm -hmm. and that would track the motion of the green screen. And then we would solve and we would create a, so we would create a scene. But before we create the scene, we would create a point cloud. So you create the point cloud first, solve, create camera, solve. And as you can see, there's two cameras here, which I'll get to soon. So essentially we have our scene one here. We've set up all of these cards and what these cards do, which you'll be able to see soon. So you can see all of this. We've got our tracker cloud in there. We have our panels and our background. So with all of this, it's able to project the image to make it believe that it is 3D. So we have our shader here. We can actually get rid of our point tracker cloud. So I'll just get rid of them. We will need all of these so you're able to fully see it all essentially. But if I switch this to camera one, this is the view that we will get. So you can see that the camera moves through the view. You just got to align it to how you see fit, which I have aligned it on a slight angle for a start and it starts to straighten itself up the further it goes along. <clears throat> now all of these get hooked up. So each image is hooked up to the card and the card is then hooked up to scene one. And scene one creates our camera, which is the camera we're looking for. And we then create a scan line render, which pretty much programs everything and says, to do this, you need to do this. So essentially we have the connection of the camera coming to our camera tracker and we have our scene connected to scanline render and camera one's connected to scanline render which is then pre-malted which is then thrown into a merge three over now we have our merge one over which is connected into our read three so it's connected straight into the reformat rather than the transform and that goes into merge three over which we then write to create the final product. So as you can see, there's all these dots in the scene. So if you just want to get rid of them, just press D again and it goes back to normal. And to export this, all you need to do is open right. You will go into here, type in the name .mov. You will go down to here, make sure it's MOV. The codec is H.264, not Apple ProRes, with the highest of quality, where you will then click Render, and due to the input settings that you would have set earlier, mine, for instance, is 50 to 350. So to get into your settings, just press S, and 
you can adjust your full size format over here.